Hello, friends. We are going to get started in just a minute. My name is Brittany Bly. I'm the founder of Pop Shop America. And we are going to talk about air plant care today, which is just going to be so much fun and really different than some of the other workshops that we do. Because for the most part, we're going to be talking about plants. So we're not really, I mean, we're going to make some stuff. We're going to make some different air plant containers and some cute little displays for our air plants. But for the most part, we're going to be talking about plants. And so it's really different than one of these normal weekly Thursday night workshops, but it's going to be really fun and really informative. So it looks like we have a few people here, which is great. I'll get started in just a minute. So now's a really great time to get settled. If you guys want to grab a snack, grab a drink, run to the restroom, anything like that, then now is a really great time to do that. Again, my name is Brittany Bly. That's me. I'm Brittany Bly. I'm the founder of Pop Shop America. And what is tonight? That's not right. Nope. Air plant care. This is what we're doing. So you guys go ahead and get settled. Grab anything you need. And I'm going to get really close to the camera. I'm going to show you guys some of the air plants that I have here in front of me. Some of the ones that we ship out with our air plant kits. We do have a bunch of different terrarium kits. We have some air plant hangers. So we do keep air plants here in the office. Because of that, I've had to become really well-versed in how to care for them. I live in Houston, Texas. Our office is in Houston, Texas. This is a pretty good environment for them, like Spanish moss, which is a type of Tillandsia, so that's considered an air plant, grows naturally here, and it's really indigenous to the Louisiana, kind of the bayou area, but that really extends through Houston as well because it's hot, it's green, it's lush, it's swampy, it's very tropical. But Tillandsia or air plants, so Tillandsia is the formal name. Tillandsia actually means upon a plant. So it's really almost the same word or word phrasing as air plant. So I think that's really cool. You know, air plant is pretty much a direct translation. Um, air plants are native to mostly North America and Central and South America. So the Americas really extending kind of around like Mesoamerica and then like up and down from there. So we'll get some varieties like up in like Texas, Louisiana, you know, where I am, Houston. And then we see them down through the tropical area of Mesoamerica, which will be like Mexico, Honduras, Guatemala, and then even into more of like the Incan area. So that's going to be more like Argentina. Um, so it's really, really cool. They're indigenous to this part of the world. It's not a plant that's coming from, you know, across the ocean that we're trying to like, you know, put into our environment here. It really lives and it thrives, you know, here in our part of the world. Um, but, it, well, and they're quite versatile as well because most of them, you know, if, if we're talking about all these different regions, you know, I've just described, you know, a swampy area into a more, um, desert or drier, hotter climate, along with some tropical climates through, you know, Central America, and then down into more of like a rainforest area. But what we see with Tillandsia, the thing that they have in common is that they're not going to be living in the soil. They're usually living up in plants or up in like rock formations or on things in things. Oftentimes Tillandsia or air plants can even kind of clamp down into that subsurface, which is like, that's so cool. You know, how do they even do that? It's such an amazing plan, but they are pretty quirky. So let me show you some of mine right here. Does anybody have any air plants? Y'all shout out to all the air plant people in the house. Let me put on my chat. Let me chat it up with y'all. So here's our chat right here, and you guys can drop anything in the chat, by the way, on Facebook, YouTube, anywhere that you are that you're watching this. If you want to say hi, say where you're from, 
Say if you have air plants, are you scared of air plants? Do you love air plants? Do you have a green thumb? Do you have a black thumb? Is it somewhere in between? Let me know because I can definitely speak to the experience that you guys are having and make sure that you get everything that you need. So I'm going to show you a few of the different air plants that we carry here in the office. They're so cute. I love them. And I don't have any that are flowering right now. I don't have any that are forming pups. I really wish that I had some that were forming pups. And if I had thought about it, I would have, we have this really amazing nursery in Houston called Another Place in Time. Shout out if you guys are in the Houston area, it's in the Houston Heights. It's incredible. They have um, carnivorous plants that are really great, um, like pitcher plants, you know, that are indigenous to our area. And they have a lot of cool, kind of interesting, unusual plants. They also carry like herbs and kind of simple things as well. They do have a really good selection of air plants. So I wish that if I thought about it, I would have gone by there to find some air plants that have some like purples and pinks, maybe see if they have any that happen to be flowering, if they happen to have any that are growing pups. And that would be so cool to show you guys. But that's okay. We can still talk about it. And that's really fun too. I definitely want you guys to walk away from this feeling really good about these plants. They are a little bit quirky to me. They took a little bit of a learning curve. Um, I grew up, my mom claims that she has a black thumb. So I never grew up, you know, knowing how to care for plants, take care of plants, anything like that. So everything that I know, everything that I've learned, I've learned as an adult. And so I'm really in the same boat as anyone here that, you know, is just getting started with plants or like doesn't feel good about airing plants. I promise you I've tested everything. So let's get into it. Okay. So let's talk about sun. Let's talk about watering. Okay. So if you remember me saying that all of these air plants, there's a lot of variety of where they come from. Things like swamps even things that are a little bit more tropical can even some of them, some of the varieties, some of the species do really well in more desert, drier climates. A lot of them, and most commonly we see them come from the rainforest and sit up high in the rainforest. So whenever we're thinking about these plants, we always want to mimic their natural surroundings. So with these air plants, they do really well when they're in indirect light. Right. Does that make sense? Like they sit in the treetops, you know, they're in this shady environment. They're kind of nestled in the rainforest and they're not getting direct light most of the time. So that's really your best bet. Indirect light. So for that reason, they're really great indoors. They're also really great indoors because they can't they can't handle anything that's too cold. Most species prefer to be over about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of them are okay down to about 35 degrees Fahrenheit, but they certainly cannot handle freezing temperatures. So they definitely want to stay fairly warm. Now, a lot of them don't love direct sunlight, and that's something that we want to think about more than we want to think about the heat capacity that they can handle. But just to clarify, you know, both their highs and their lows, they really can't handle, most Tillandsia cannot handle to be over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's great, right? Where does it get to 120? I mean, maybe like Phoenix, Arizona, or like maybe Houston, you know, we had that heat wave back in 2011 where it was like 114, I think for like two weeks straight, which was insane. It's been really hot this summer too, by the way. So like shout out to anyone else that's like from here, like we're all, we're all dying. If you're not from here, like, good job. Don't, don't go here right now. It's so bad. Oh my gosh. We're just, I mean, I'm like so hot right now, just like standing in my AC office. So, okay. So as low as 45 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe even 35 degrees Fahrenheit, they can handle up to maybe 120-ish, but they do prefer indirect light, right? So we definitely want to consider keeping them indoors 
near a window, maybe a shady window, definitely not like, like a hot, heavy, you know, full sun window, something like a little bit nicer than that. Watering. So watering is the thing that is like so contentious in the air plant world. And if you read about this online, you will hear like 10 different people tell you like 20 different things about how to water air plants. And I have like talked to air plant people like I from doing Pop Shop Houston Festival, I've talked to other air plant cultivators. And when I tell them my watering method, I have literally I remember this woman like so specifically, like giving me like this like like gross, like disgusted face. When I told her my watering method, she was horrified and she could not help but like visualize that on her face. She was, and this is so crazy when she told me she was one of these people, she was one of those air plant misters. So people that literally take a mist bottle like this of water and mist their air plant. But here's why I hate this method. Okay. You'll meet these people. These people are amazing. I wish that I could do that. I mean, I've heard people do that with succulents as well. But here's the thing is that you can't really measure. Like, let me just show you guys. We'll see if maybe you guys can see this on screen. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's no way you're going to see this water mist. But I promise you I'm misting water right now. But there's no way to measure. And you guys would be able to see it or just imagine, you know, if you have water misters or like hairspray bottles or anything like that. There's no way to measure or determine how much water is coming out. And one of the things about watering air plants is that they don't want to get water down in these crevices, down in these like gorgeous little leaves. They don't want water down there for long periods of time. When we water our air plants, we want them to dry out pretty quickly. So what I like to do, let me show you my little bowl of water. Let me move everything aside. Look at all the stuff I have, y'all. I said we're not going to be crafting today, or not really, but we're going to craft today. All right. I want to be gentle with all my air plants, give them some love. So I've got this little bowl of water right here. Now this is regular tap water. But what I like to do and what I have been recommended by other people is I fill a bowl of water and I let it sit out for a full day before I use it. Now, if any of you have ever had an aquarium, kept fish, dealt with, you know, carnivorous plants, you might be used to, you know, dealing with like chlorine or like hard water. Again, I know I keep referencing this because anytime we talk about plants or gardening, where you live becomes a factor. So I'll keep mentioning, you know, I'm in Houston, but we have really hard water here. We have a lot of minerals. We have a lot of salts. We have a lot of chlorine in our water. So I just want to give it some time for some of those things to start to, you know, sink down to the bottom, to off gas. I just want to let my water set. I have read of people that collect, you know, maybe in different parts of the country, collect like river water or like pond water for their Tillandsia, which like, oh my goodness, like how lovely, you know, I'm sure that they love that, but that's, that is not a thing that I could possibly do. But anyway, I have my bowl of water. I let it sit out for a full day. And then I just take my air plants and I dunk them in here. Now, I like to make sure that the base of them gets a little bit of water. But what's really amazing is that these all of these air plants, their leaves rapidly, rapidly absorb water. They're really great at absorbing water and they can do it through all of their leaves. A lot of people that are very specific and careful with their air plants might even kind of toss it around just to make sure that all of those leaves get a little bit wet. Now I'll leave it in here for me about 10 minutes. During the summer, I like to do this every one to two weeks. In the winter, you can do it a little bit less. So maybe every three weeks, 
maybe even less than that. But I would say three weeks is a really good kind of thing to start with. Now, here's the quirk is watering your Tillandsia is by far the number one thing that is going to make or break the health of your plant. It's not just easy to underwater them and for them to dry out and die, but it's also easy to overwater them or rather not overwater them. That's not really right. Not overwater them, but allow the water to sit inside of all of those leaves that I was mentioning. Right, so sometimes if we're not careful as we're watering it, all these little water droplets can get inside of here. And if they don't dry out fast enough, then the plant can rot and die really quickly. So those are the two plant killers for air plants. Underwatering and then seeing it dry out and die. Overwatering, meaning... I'm going to stop saying overwatering. That's not right. Not overwatering, but not letting it dry out completely, it getting root rot and it dying really, really quickly. So I'm just going to check the chat since I'm really like close to the camera. Oh, nobody's saying hi. I got a bunch of quiet people today. That's totally wonderful, you guys. This is your workshop. You do not have to like drop things in the chat. Let me know if you have any questions, but please, like this is your time. I appreciate your time so sincerely. It is the most precious gift we have. So just sharing it here with me is uh, is really appreciated. It was really wonderful. And speaking of you guys, I don't want you to miss this. We do this every Thursday for these live craft classes. If you go to Pop Shop America, anything that you see, anything in the shop that's 15% off, use this coupon code at checkout, you guys. So since I'm close to the camera, I want you guys to see that. All right. Well, I keep mentioning root rot. So let's talk about how we're gonna dry out this plant a little bit more. So let's say I've had it in here for my 10 minutes. It's probably been a few minutes less than that, but that's okay. This is really just for demo purposes. What I wanna do is I wanna take my air plant out and let's just put this bowl of water to the side. I'm gonna make a big old mess when I'm doing this, but that's okay. What I like to do is I take the air plant in between my hands and I'm going to shake it. But see, let me get really close so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm probably going to get water on my computer. So you see how I'm like shaking it, but I'm also like holding it so it can't move too much. The reason that I'm doing that is because I don't want to like fling the plant around. I want to be nice and gentle and still treat it like a plant but I wanna get as much of the water out of the leaves manually as I possibly can. Additionally, air plants will build up salts around their roots. And so if you shake them, then it can help to remove that. And it also can help to remove any minerals from the water that might be accumulating as well. So it's just giving it a nice little shake to just get it ready to dry out a little bit more thoroughly. Now, the next thing that I like to do, most people like to display their air plants, you know, maybe on its side or maybe face up and maybe even like putting it inside of a pot. And so it's kind of coming out like this. If that's how you're displaying it, then you actually want to do the opposite when you're drying it. You want to put it upside down like so. Now, some people display it like that. And if so, that's totally great. You know, you just put it the way that it normally goes. So I have my moist air plant right here. I'm going to let it dry completely just like this. I can place it on a tea towel. I can place it on some paper towels just to give it a little bit of absorbency. And then I'm going to leave it here. And I definitely want to consider putting this in like indirect sunlight, the same kind of environment where it's going to thrive. I want to put it in that same kind of environment to dry. I definitely want there to be a little bit of light because I want to make sure that this dries pretty much completely within three hours. 
Now that three hours is not something that I've ever personally been able to test. I mean, it's such like a specific number. I just read it over and over and over again from other air plant um, gardeners, other air plant cultivators that I assume that it's accurate, but I can say that um, we definitely want it to dry out. I would say like within a day. So sure. Three hours, if, if that's what you say. So one of the things that's so great about these air plants is, you know, because it's in a soilless environment, it's not absorbing those nutrients from the soil. So we don't really have to worry about fertilizer as much as we would with, you know, other plants or things that we're trying to encourage to flower. There does, um, there, there is air plant fertilizer that exists. I do keep some in stock in the office. And what I do is put it in these like little tiny mister bottles just like this. And I'll just give it a mist like maybe once every six months, once a year. It's not something you have to do. It's something you can do. I would recommend just getting a specific air plant fertilizer. I wouldn't necessarily recommend to like look at like the nitrogen and the other mineral kind of makeup and try to concoct your own from other fertilizers. I would just go ahead and get something specific for air plants just because they are, you know, a little bit delicate. And it's so inexpensive and it's something that already exists. So in my opinion, I don't think that there's need to, you know, do anything too complicated with the way that you fertilize it. Again, you don't have to do it. I do it once a year, twice a year, just give it a tiny little mist. So that's the only time I missed it. I don't miss to water them. I will mist to fertilize them and only once a year. So I'm going to check my notes because I definitely don't want to leave anything out. And there's lots of little odds and ends. So we talked about temperature. We talked about them being best indoors. I don't think I mentioned in the beginning that there's about 650 different varieties of Tillandsia. I might have mentioned that when I was talking about Spanish moss and how that's um, native to Louisiana. And we have it here in Houston. Um, again, there's species that are native to Central America. There are species that are native to the rainforest in South America. So, and there's some that are from the Caribbean as well. I did not mention that. There's some that's from the Caribbean. But when I read that, the first time I read that, I was like, that to me, I feel like there had to have been a travel route that perhaps brought some of these species to different places because I'm like, an island in the Caribbean. I don't know how something native would be there and then also on the continent. I'm like, I think that I didn't read this anywhere. This is just speculation, you guys. And you're welcome to tell me that I'm dead wrong and I have no idea what I'm talking about in the chat. But to me, it just made sense that it had to have come back and forth from trade routes and people, um, you know, just trading with each other. Um, okay. So we talked about what Tillandsia means. I didn't mention... This is so cool about air plants as well. They're evergreen. They're perennials, which means that they're going to live for longer than two years. They always remain green. So they're technically evergreens, which I think is so cool because in my head, I like think of very different types of plants being evergreens. And um, again, I mentioned that they do flower after they flower, that's when they'll sometimes start to create pups. So pups are what we call little baby air plants. And what they do is they'll grow off the side of the air plants, usually in like little parts kind of near the roots. It'll ordinarily, it'll grow kind of like right in here so that it's protected by the larger plant and it'll start to grow bigger and bigger. Now you can actually leave them together. An air plant will often create, you know, two pups, three pups, even five pups. And what you can see sometimes, especially like out in the wild, or if there's like a, maybe a garden center or some kind of like beautiful botanical garden that keeps them. What you see sometimes are these air plants that are they almost look like kissing balls where they have 
um, their leaves growing at every single angle because the pups are starting to grow off of them and it forms this really cool cluster. So those people that are into air plants will call those clusters. And that's when there's multiple pups that are still hanging out and is still attached to their mother. But what you can do is wait for your pup to get big enough. A good rule of thumb, I shouldn't use that expression. I'm sorry for all the women out there that don't want me to use that expression. A good um, thing to consider, common thing to consider with um, pulling a pup off of the mother is waiting for that pup to be about a third of the size of the mother. So for a plant about this size, we want to think about a pup that's maybe about like yay big. And then what you can do is you just take that pup and you just really gently twist it back and forth, super gentle, and just pull it right off. Then you're going to water your pup. You're going to water your mother just like you've been watering them. You're going to keep taking care of them just like you have been. Everything else remains the same. Okay, what else? What else did I miss? Oh, how big they get. Okay, so this is really cool. I have seen, if you Google this online, you will see air plants that get to be huge. Now, I had a friend um, like around like college era that like her mom was really into gardening and she had an air plant that she would put in this like plant stand that was 30 years old, not kidding you. And I'm going to say it was maybe like yay big. I mean, my goodness, it was a monster and it was so beautiful and it was so cool. What's crazy about that particular air plant is, um, like, um, the bigger it gets, the more that for me, it was a little bit hard to tell whether it was doing well, whether it's healthy, whether it, you know, needs more attention. It becomes a little bit more unclear because it just has all of these pieces, you know, coming off in every direction. And like the color of it was a little bit more silvery than other types of, you know, Tillandsia that you might see that are maybe on the greener side. So that was like a little bit challenging, but I mean, she knew her plan and that's what's important. And that thing was a monster. So air plants can get to be, I think the largest on record was about seven feet, but just for, you know, keeping them at home, they're most likely going to be smaller than 10 inches. That's the most common. Most Tillandsia are only going to live to be, you know, two to five years old. And that's it. That's their entire lifespan. So you can find some that live longer. There are cases of plants living a lot longer than that. But for the most part, you're going to see air plants that are kind of small, that are giftable, that are smaller than 10 inches, that live for two to five years. I mean, I can't believe it. Like we talked about everything that was in my notes. There's only like a few things that I forgot to tell you guys. So that's really cool. So let's go ahead and build some cute little containers and just kind of think about, you know, how we can display them. Think about some different ideas. I do have come to think of it on the blog, a blog tutorial that's called, it's like 15 ways to display air plants. Let me find that for you guys right now, just so you guys have some resources so you don't have to like memorize everything that we're talking about in this workshop. I hope you guys are having fun and not feeling like um, you have to take notes. Gorgeous air plant display ideas. Okay, boom. So I'm going to drop this in the chat. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it from there. No worries if you can't. You can go to our website. If you click this link right here, this will take you to our website. You guys are welcome to use that coupon code. So there's that link. And actually here, I can do something. Look at that. Check it out. It's the magic of the internet. So there's that link right there. If you guys want to check it out just later on, there's a lot of different ideas about how you can display them. Um, in the blog, you'll see, you know, macrame, air plant hangers. You know, you can use like clothes pins. 
You can make a centerpiece of lots of different varieties. You can make little mini kind of wall uh, mounted pieces or little mini shelves. There's lots of different ideas there. So feel free to check it out if you guys are interested in more. But here are some of the things that I have here. So this is something that we carry on the website. We have these beautiful glass teardrops that you can just hang from the ceiling. It comes with clear twine. These are quite delicate, so definitely be careful. If you want to use something like this, just be really careful with them. Be careful when you hang it so that you're like, you know what I mean? Like if you're free floating, you know, out off of your couch or standing on a chair, um, especially if you have like hardwood floors or anything like that because these are um, quite delicate. But they're also very beautiful. So I'll show you guys that. We'll kind of play around with all these different display ideas. Um, so we have that teardrop shape, but we also have this little bubble shape. These are super cute. So we've got these clear glass. You can also use like fun kind of objects like this, like this little birdhouse right here. It's not a real birdhouse. It's just made to look like a birdhouse, and you can place some inside, which is a super cute idea. You could use any kind of terrarium vessel, terrarium container that you like, or you can use fun planters kind of like this. There's a million different ideas. None of them are wrong. All of them are right. So let's just play around with this. Let me grab, I don't have any reindeer moss in front of me, so I'm going to step to the side and grab some reindeer moss. I'm in the office, which makes this so convenient. This table right here where I set up for videos is right next to all of our gardening supplies. So all of these things are just like a little step away. So let me show you guys a couple different shades of reindeer moss because you can find this in every color of the rainbow. So let me just show you some options. And let me know if you guys have a preference because I can absolutely build this air plant container with any colors that you like. I'm a big fan of this natural green right here, so I'll probably use that. It's not really natural. Actually, it's what I like about this so much is that it has this like pop of beautiful green, bright kind of limey color. Lots of peaches. This kind of has a Palm Springs vibe to it. But literally, you can find reindeer moss like this in every color of the rainbow, purple, black, gray, every shade of green, white, any anything you like. And this can be a really great accessory because what we can do is we can take our air plant Gently place it inside. And this guy's just a little bit big, so some of his leaves are sticking out of our teardrop. That's already quite beautiful. But to me, this feels maybe just like a little bit empty. So that's what I like about this reindeer moss, is that we can take it. Reindeer moss tears quite easily, so you can tear it into the size and shape that you like. So I can just take a little piece like this, just a tiny little sprig, and just place it anywhere I like inside of our little vessel and just start to dress it up and just make it feel a little bit more finished. I could do it with one color. I could use many colors, you know, pink and green or different shades of green. So it's just a fun little way to dress it up. Same goes with this little bubble that we've got right here. Again, we don't need soil, but you can always use soil. If you like the way that soil looks, go ahead and try it. You know, what's great about soil is that it can offer a little bit of stability. But one thing to note is if you put that air plant in soil, you are gonna wanna pull it out completely to be able to water it. So just be prepared for that. 
All right, I've got my bubble vessel. And I've got my reindeer moss in here. Now, what I love about this is that it's so fast, right? So we can make some little planters like this. Like, think about how beautiful this would be, you know, at a wedding. You could give this to the guests as a, you know, thank you for attending gift. You could use this um, as centerpieces for an event, you know, not just a wedding, but a dinner party, anything like that. You could make a whole series of these and use them as a tablescape. They're so quick and easy to make in that way. And then we've talked about how to care for them. So hopefully you guys feel really good about how to care for them as well. This guy right here, this is so fun. So this actually opens right here. And we can put some air plants inside of here. Now there's one thing that I would recommend, which is it looks so beautiful when you add, you know, mini air plants together. But if you decide to add more than one air plant into the same container, make sure that all of them are able to get enough light. Make sure that all of them have a little bit of space just to be able to, you know, be their own plant. There can be like, they can get kind of smushed or bogged down. So if you're making a, um, like a tablescape, you know, or a centerpiece, we are using a lot of different air plants. Um, sometimes that's something that we just want to do temporarily, you know, for a dinner party and then take it apart just to give it a little bit more room. And then again, we will want to open this up every single time we water it. All right, let's make one more and then we'll show them all off again. And then I'll see if you guys have any questions. If there's anything else you guys want to talk about when it comes to air plants. Let me know if anything was confusing. Let me know if you want a refresher on any of the ideas that we talked about. All right, so here I've got some soil in front of me. I don't even have a spoon ready to go. I literally just grabbed this bag of soil when I saw this planter right here and I thought this would be so cute. So it was a little bit of an afterthought, but you know, we love getting our hands dirty, right? We love plants. So I'm just going to add a little bit of soil right here and that's just so I can give it a little bit of support, give the air plant some support so that I can stand it up. All right, so I'm not smushing this dirt down, right? Because I'm gonna have to pull this plant in and out to be able to water it. So let me show you how I've done this soil. So I've made a little mess on top, so I'm just trying to brush it off, but I could always wipe it down with a paper towel. And here's how I have that soil. And this is an actual, this isn't a faux tree branch, this is a, uh, an actual tree branch that's been cut and um, cored to make into a planter. And then I can just take my air plant and just nestle him right in there so that he can stand up. You know, he looks like a little tree. So cute. All right, so let me know how you guys feel about all of the different stuff we talked about. We talked about sunlight. We talked about watering. We talked about temperatures. We definitely covered all of our basics. Let's run through everything really quickly right now just to make sure you guys feel good about that. So sunlight. We want indirect sunlight. Indoors is really going to be easiest. It can handle more than indirect sunlight, but you definitely want to get it near a window. If you put it in a very sunny window, you're going to need to bump up the watering. You're going to need to watch it really carefully, make sure it's not getting too much sun, that it's not drying out, that it's not, you know, crisping up. But indirect sunlight is best. It can handle a little bit more sun from there. What we don't want is to put it in the dark. It needs sunlight. It's a living plant. It's a plant. 
give it sun. As far as water, I recommend watering it right now. I would say once a week, once every two weeks. In the wintertime, you can go down to about once every three weeks. Now, I showed you the bowl of water. I did mention that there are people, you'll run into people all the time that like to do the misting thing. I don't like to do the misting because I don't think it offers enough control. I don't think that it's easy to know how much you've misted. And I think that it can be too confusing, like, should you miss them every day, every other day? You know what I mean? All of that is just, it just makes it to me a little bit more challenging, where the bowl of water is a little bit more tried and true. It's a little bit easier to work with. I like to dunk mine for around 10 minutes, once a week, once every two weeks. When I pull it out of the water, I shake the plant gently in between my hands to get the water out from the spines, from all of the places in between the leaves. And I like to break the salts away from the roots. So that's why I like to shake it a little bit. Then I place it upside down. And what I mean by upside down is like so, so that the water can drip out from these spines. Place it on top of a tea towel or a paper towel in indirect sunlight, let it set for at least a few hours until it's completely dry, and then you can put it back wherever it goes. Now, those are all the basics of care. So I'm gonna check the chat really quick and see if anybody has any questions, any concerns, and then we'll come back next week for moon macrame wall hangings. I had to think about it, but we are doing moon macrame wall hangings. And we have another workshop this Sunday at 11 a.m. We are making hand-knit poof pillows. We're finally doing our redo because if you guys remember, I was out of town a couple weeks ago. And so we are doing our arm knit. You don't need knitting needles. We're going to use our arms and we're going to make poof pillows with a faux merino wool. They're going to be so pretty. All right. Sounds like everybody's doing good. And let me just drop that little coupon code right here. There it is, Craft with Brittany. It's 15% off anything on the website. So if you want to grab the air plant um, vessel with an air plant in it or anything else, then that's there. Sunday at 11 a.m. is hand knit, arm knit poof pillows. Next Thursday is moon macrame wall hangings. All of it you can find on the website at popshopamerica.com. Just click on events and it'll tell you everything that's coming up. And they're all free. All the virtual workshops are always free. And they usually have a corresponding kit that you can get if you want, if you want to follow along, but you don't need to. And that's it. So you guys have the best day. Have a great night.